The Me Too campaign began to spread virally as a hashtag on social media in October 2017 after many sexual abuse allegations against Harvey Weinstein were made public. Eventually, the movement exposed not only the high-profile figures but also throughout the societal strata, Me Too cases emerged. What if we tell you that sexual harassment cases have been recorded within an organization that not only supports and promotes human rights but is also the origin of many of these rights? We are talking about the United Nations. Yes, the United Nations too got Me Too'd. Hi and welcome to TFI Global, the foreign affairs and geopolitical analysis arm of TFI Media Group. I'm your host Kanika and if you haven't subscribed to the TFI Global channel yet, hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon to receive all the latest updates. And please install our Apple and Android mobile app. The link is given below in the description. On October 15, 2017, American actress Alyssa Milano posted on Twitter, if all the women who have been sexually harassed or assaulted wrote Me Too as a status, we might give people a sense of magnitude of the problem. Soon after, prominent American celebrities including Governor Paltrow, Ashley Judd, Jennifer Lawrence, Uma Thurman and other made a number of high-profile postings and comments. The widespread media coverage and discussion of sexual harassment, especially in Hollywood, resulted in high-profile job terminations as well as criticism and outrage. After millions of people started using the phrase and hashtag, the expression soon began to spread to dozens of other languages as well. Recently, a BBC documentary, The Whistleblowers Inside the UN, showcased tons of allegations of corruption, scandals and cases of sexual harassment. It further broadcast how management turned a blind eye to wrongdoing and sexual abuse. Testimonies in the documentary reveal how many personnel in the organization used their power and position to harass female employees. Through these testimonies, many women employees made detailed allegations about their careers being derailed when they reported senior colleagues for serious sexual misconduct. The trauma of these employees has not been limited to sexual abuse. In fact, staff members who tried to report allegations told the BBC that they had been penalized after speaking out and some were even sacked. In the film, Miss Sin, who was appointed as a spokeswoman on harassment, assaulted and discrimination in 2018, said there were women at the UN who had been approached, accosted and raped. The more men were allowed to get away with it, she said, the more they will keep doing it. She had stated that the deeply upsetting testimonies are not surprising to her, according to the BBC Newsnight. Although the organization has a system of addressing all the staff complaints internally through the Office of Internal Oversight Services, that is OIOS, but it has no legal authority. A covert tape that was given to the BBC reveals that the OIOS is occasionally ineffective. It shows Ben Svensson, the investigation division's director, speaking to a staff gathering. He claims that a senior female UN employee had sobbed to him about how an assistant secretary general had placed his hand down her pants. He claimed that the woman was urged not to disclose the alleged attack because the accused was a favoured son. Therefore, she was discouraged from doing so. Martina Bostrom, a former senior advisor for UNAIDS, told the BBC that she was also a victim of sexual harassment at work. Sexual abuse, exploitation and harassment in the UN happen in headquarters. It happens Monday to Friday. It happens during regular work hours. It happens everywhere, she said. This is the most despicable thing that could possibly occur in a reputable organization that is intended to combat such types of crimes. It is absolutely repugnant to see that an organization that prides itself on promoting gender equality is producing cases of sexual harassment and exploitation. 